We have a brand new chef in the kitchen, so we decided we're going to kind of launch you into the new season and welcome those summer days of like the sun setting at something past eight, not at like yesterday at two o'clock in the afternoon. No, we welcome in the sunshine and bright flavors. And like I said, we got a brand new chef in the kitchen, and her name is Shannon Smith, or better known as Mini Mommy Chef Shannon. Welcome to the kitchen. Come and give her a round of applause. <laughs> Woo! We are very excited, always excited to have new chefs in the kitchen. Welcome. Thank you. So we've invited you to bring the color and the warmth, and you're doing it with the hair already. You got the theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are we making? What, what's this dish that we're going to be making this morning that's going to welcome those warmer summer days? So this is an Italian-inspired, like, one-pot vegan meal. It's quick and easy to make. Um, it's healthy, nutritious, and it's got those tomatoes, so it's all summery and... Colourful, I yeah. love it. Now, if you want to be part of this morning's Culinary Hotline Bling, we are welcoming you to send us voice notes to 063-408-8863. The phone lines are open. We want to hear any culinary conundrums that you have about absolutely anything. No theme today, just go crazy, ask us all your questions. Shannon, talk us through what you started with first. OK, so in the meantime, we're busy sauteing some onions, and then we're going to move on to uh, getting these tomatoes up in the pan. Once we've got a little bit of blitz on them, we're going to blitz mm -hmm. them up. Then we're going to add in our chicken stock and let the lentils cook for about 30 minutes. For serving, we're just going to use some ciabatta bread, add some basil onto that, and enjoy. Nice, nice, nice. Now, tell me, if you had to define your cooking style, because, guys, you need to go check out Shannon's amazing Instagram page. If you had to tell me, if you had to, like, to sum up your style of cooking, how, what, how would you define it? Um, I'm, I'm a home-based cook. Um, I'm, I'm not a, a, a formally trained chef. So my meals are very homey, mm -hmm. and obviously I'm a mother, so it stems from me being a mother and having to get meals on the table that are healthy, nutritious, and delicious all on, on, on very minimal time. So it's more Cape Malay and home-style cooking. OK, I yeah. love it. And you spoke about being a mom and you're adding those nutrients to your foods. You're doing it right now. Again, you've got some veggies in the pan already. Yeah. And then you've got your lentils. And I think lentils are a great way to add, how do I say it, the meatiness to yeah. a dish, the, that bulk, that substance to, to a dish. I love using lentils. And you're also using the orange lentils, which is great because you don't have to pre-soak them. You can if you want exactly, to. Exactly, but they work without being pre-soaked, so that's quite cool. Love that. Saves time. Okay, so once you let me give you. Can I turn up the heat on the yes, on the stove please. a little bit? Okay, you got it. You got it. Yeah. So. Onions and tomato in the pan. What do we do next? Okay, so we're just going to wait for these to uh, soften up a little bit, and mm -hmm. we're going to blitz them up. Once we're doing that, most of the work comes in when we're waiting for lentils to get done. So right. it, it, it's very efficient and effective for me because it just you throw it in the pan, you leave it over there, and when it's done, you pop in some eggs and serve. I like that. Also, I find that lentils, their texture gets better. If you yes, made it yes. like the day before. Exactly. Uh, so I like the idea that you can also meal prep this dish and save a little bit of timing in the kitchen. Exactly. Awesome. Okay, so let's pretend we've cooked our tomatoes and our onions to the point where it needs to be. What do we do next? Okay, once we've done that, tomatoes, onions, chicken stock. Okay, Hoy, let's go. Let's add the chicken stock in okay, the meat. Perfect. So let's just pretend. Up this. Hey? Yeah, let's pretend we're there already. Pretending. Let's blitz up these tomatoes. Clem, do you want to help me out with that? I'm scared it's going to go all over okay. the place. Apron on. So while I do <laughs> no, this, let's first go to uh, blitzing up these tomatoes. Get them to a nice little paste. Okay, yeah. just in the pan like that. Yeah, but while that's I'm what I'm saying. I'm scared it's going okay. to shoot you, all you're, over. Okay, you're smart to do that because <laughs> it might happen. Okay, so before I blitz, let's listen to a voice note that we have quickly. Morning Express, so I see for you, um, I see the recipe is all about lentils and um, so my question is, um, if you don't want to use lentils, are there any other alternatives? You got that question? Well, there's a few suggestions that I can give you. So basically, if you don't want to use any legumes or grains, I highly suggest that you use quinoa or, or one of those kind of things. 
And then if you do want to stick to using legumes and grains, you can use any one of the wide varieties that I have on offer. You get different ones of these, you get spalt, you get lots of this, like an endless amount of grains to choose from. I like that, yeah. Okay, so there you got your answer. And I do like, I feel like grains are coming back in trend at the moment. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because a lot of people are shifting away from, not shifting away, but they, they're becoming flexitarian. So yeah. they'll have meat, but just less days in the week. And that's where grains come into play. So I really like the fact that you are introducing lentils and that you've given amazing suggestions. I think it's also very really nutritious because it's high mm. in fiber and it's, it's good for cholesterol and heart disease. And it's actually just a very healthy, uh, grains are healthy to incorporate in the diet in, in just all around. Love it. I love it. Okay, cool. So, it's not cooked down yet, but let's see, do it, does it actually... So I'm yes. going to step back. Yes. Okay, step back. <laughs> We're just going to break it down a little bit. But, I mean, keeping it a little chunky, is that okay? Uh, yeah. Or do you sure. want it smooth, smooth? No, it's fine. Okay, so once we've blended those tomatoes, what happens next? Okay, perfect. So, I think you can just leave it like that. Let's throw in the chicken stock, but let's turn down the heat a little cool. bit. Cool. You can swap again. So, the main objective here is obviously to turn this into a little bit of paste. We're going to add this in and then simmer in our lentils for 20 to 25 minutes. Awesome. Okay. And the, you say you're going with veggie stock? Yeah. I mean, obviously, we're keeping it veggie, everything vegetable exactly. based. Exactly. I think it's so important to incorporate one vegan um, day in your household. And I think the reason is because of sustainability and right. for many other reasons. But for me, in my home, it's mainly about teaching my daughter about sustainability and um, the impact of over farming and those kind of reasons. And I think that's very important, especially starting those lessons now. Yeah. You're kind of raising your daughter then to be a conscious a conscious, conscious shopper, conscious eater, cook, yeah. conscious eater. I love that idea. Okay, so we've got our stock in now. Lentils are going to join the party. Yeah, so let's throw in the lentils. All right, okay, so South Africa, don't forget, if you want to be part of this morning's culinary hotline, all you've got to do is send through those voice notes to that magical number, 063-408-8863. Channel's not going anywhere. You're going to be here the whole morning, so make sure you stay tuned to the culinary hotline. Bling! Two, two, two. <laughs> Oh, very important. The people upstairs are saying, you need to get this recipe. Go and check it out on expressoshow.com. This is a must-make recipe. And we will finish this dish off in the next part of the Outline Bling. Yeah. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back to the second installment of the Culinary Hotline Bling! Two, two, two. All right, now, so we started off with our, can I say plant-based? Is it plant-based? No, it yes, plant -based. our plant-based first course, and it's looking like it's almost done. Shannon's still in the kitchen with us, but what is gonna, our second recipe going to be? Uh, so our next recipe, we're making crispy gochujang chicken wings. Um, it's an Asian-inspired fusion kind of... Chicken wing, it's yummy, it's delicious. It's spicy, it's slightly yeah. sweet, it's warm. Again, all the flavors we are expecting for summer. I don't know why I have tongues in my hands. Okay, so, <laughs> like that, you have a crispy chicken wings, and there's such an amazing fusion of Asian food at the moment. Yeah. And I, I do agree, that's just how you welcome summer, all the vibrancy and flavors. So, yeah. let's first do the reveal of what our lentils look like. And it hasn't even been in there for so long. Exactly, they and you can super see quick. It's looking so good. So, I'm gonna drop some chicken wings, and you're probably gonna Chop basil for me? Yeah, I'm okay, going to cool. finish off the Italian wine pot dish. Perfect. So, tell me about the wings. What are they dusted? Is it just normal flour? Uh, it's just normal flour to give it a little bit of coating um, okay. and to add some crisp when frying. Right. So, while I'm doing this, we've got a voice note. And it's, a, it's a, apparently there's a story about it. So, let's listen to Penny's voice note. Morning, Chef, uh, uh, Chef Clem. Uh, I am a very regular espresso fan. And uh, I enjoy watching your shows and the creativity. Because I used to say I'm a food developer and creativity. Because I was staying alone and I used to make my own food. Being alone, one pan in the oven with everything in. And when I dish, I've got veggies in my protein and everything. And on the score of the legumes, yes, it's a plus. It's a yes, yes with legumes. I, use, I make a curry lentil salad, which is a favorite when we have a braai or so, like a side dish or so. I throw it in my soups, in stews and everything. 
And I just love your show. So I would like you to please just share uh, my voice. My God, thank you. Bye. Oh, uh, thank you, Penny. Thank you so much for watching the show. We love you, Penny. Can we get a... We love you, Penny, from the background? We love you, Penny! Yes, there you go. Thank you so much, Penny. And I love the way that you're using lentils in such a versatile way. And I agree, adding, adding spice to it is so great because they are like little tiny sponges so they just suck up all the flavor. Yeah. Penny, we love your recipe. I think, Shannon, next time you come, will you do a curry lentil dish for Penny? Oh, yes, definitely, just for Penny. Just for Penny. Penny, we did it for you. Thank you so much for that voice note. Okay, so, chicken wings going in. Perfect. And you've separated them from yes. flats and from drums. Yes. And I see you take the tips off. Yes. Some of our viewers are very divided, eh? Well, you can use that for chicken stock. Yes. Uh, and it also, my daughter loves me throwing them in the oil, actually, and, and like eating them as the last part, like just as crunch, because it turns out super crunchy. One of our other presenters, Tabiso, his favorite part of the chicken wing isn't the drum, isn't the flat, it's yeah. the wing tip. And he even demonstrates. He even demonstrates how he eats it. So some people really are into the chicken tips. But again, it actually has more flavor because yeah. of that skin and the bone that's on there. So totally with you. And you say that's just normal flour. You're just frying it to get a bit of a crust on there. Yeah. And you obviously can either use flour or cornstarch. Or corn. Yeah. Absolutely. So you've added basil to the lentils now. Yeah. And Penny earlier spoke about using curry. And I like that you're using lentils, but in a more Italian way. And then if you actually look at some recipes, like almost every country in the world has a way that they use lentils. So I like that you're taking us to like a different route with lentils yeah, yeah, today. Yeah. Love it. Thank you. Basil's in. What are we adding to that next? So now I'm going to add in some garlic. I've got some salt and pepper and then just a mixture of herbs. So it's like the, your Provencal mixture. So it's like rosemary, exactly. a bit of thyme, a yes. little bit of dried parsley. At Love the end you. of the day, it's just supposed to be a quick one pan, easy delicious meal. And it is, I mean, shakshukas for me are like the unicorns of recipes. It's got so much depth to it. Yeah. It's also, you can use almost anything in them. Exactly. And then, I mean, perfectly great for like breakfast, lunch or dinner. Exactly. I like eggs for dinner. Like, I feel like that's a, that's, a, that's a thing, yeah? Okay, so you said you, you've not worked in, um, you weren't culinary trained. No. I'm gonna like, Truth bomb time. Yeah. As a chef working in the in restaurants, right, coming up late at night, do you know what my number one dinner was? What? Cornflakes. Oh my goodness. Cornflakes. And but I still I feel like I let you down. Isn't that just like the best though? Just uh, a yes. bowl of cornflakes? I feel like I should have said chuck sugar because you were leading me there. Exactly. But I was like, oh. Cold, cold cornflakes, no sugar. Uh, cold milk. Cornflakes, no sugar. That's a chef's dinner. Sounds True story. Sounds like a, so a starving chef's dinner, though. Yeah, I don't know if I was starving. <laughs> I was a little thinner then than I am now, but yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Chicken wings are going. Also, all we're trying to do but now is, are we cooking it fully through? Uh, yes. So, we're going to do six minutes, because that's all it takes to cook through a chicken wing. We're going to take them out, and we're going to toss them in the sauce. But in the meantime, let's start the gochujang sauce. Please. So, um, what is gochujang? So gochujang is a Korean pepper paste. Mm -hmm. um, it's they, it's just it's spicy, it's umami, it's sweet, sour, um, and it just adds that peppery flavour. Mm -hmm. Uh, with it, we're going to add in some honey for sweetness, some soy sauce for saltiness. We've got some vinegar to balance it out, and then I've got some garlic and ginger, just to add some more umami to it. Awesome. And does it all just? end up in one bowl. So we're all going to throw it into this pot okay. over here. We're going to uh, get it a little bit thinner and then we're going to coat the wings in it. I love it. Perfect. If you... Uh, trick question. Yep. I always find, like, Asian ingredients, when you buy them once, they do tend to last for a long time because you don't use it that often. Exactly, because they're super flavour-intense. Um, they, they are a bit on the pricey side, mm -hmm. but it lasts... Uh, one tablespoon goes a long way. Absolutely. So here's the trick question. What would you say to someone who's looking to build a essential Asian pantry? What are some of the, let's say, some of the key ingredients that they can actually get that'll give them a lot of versatile uses? Ooh, that's a good one. So we always want to have white wine vinegar. Mm -hmm. uh, Gochugaru is actually a pepper flake. Uh, it's used in kimchi and all those kind of dishes. So vinegar, gochugaru, you want to have honey or cornstarch, which helps right, to thickening, thickening and, and, yeah. and always gives that glossy, beautiful gloss. Uh, and soy sauce, right? And soy sauce, obviously, how could I forget that? Soy sauce, I feel like soy, soy sauce, sauce is like... 
garlic yeah. and ginger. I think those are like your staples. As long as you have red pepper flakes, because they always say like kimchi. I see they now make shows on just kimchi itself. Um, yes, and, and, yeah. and like where it comes from. And all of that umami comes from your red pepper or red pepper flakes. I love it. Portugaro. I love yeah. that. Okay, cool. So. When we come back, we're gonna check on those chicken wings. We, we're gonna actually add the eggs to our shakshuka now, so we'll have a massive reveal for you in the third part. Shannon, you're not going anywhere. We're gonna see these chicken wings. We'll be back with more culinary hotline bling! Ding, ding! ding. ding. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to the third installment of the Culinary Hotline Bling! Ting, ting, ting! Are you used to doing the ting, ting, tings now? Uh, it feels a little bit awkward, but I'm getting more yes. comfortable with it. It's, the, it's best, fine. It's the best way to wake, wake up the vocal cords <laughs> and wake up everyone. So it's a thing. Okay, cool. Can I just talk about these wings? Yeah. Okay, first things first. So they came out of the oil, crispy, yeah. and we poured that beautiful gochujang dressing over it. Yes. It looks so good. So good, in fact, that there was another layer of chicken wings over here, and one you and Stradom had himself an early breakfast. So we'll find out with him a little later what he thought about those wings. But I tasted that sauce. I know it's delicious, right? Put that on. Anything. Put that on. Any, put that on a shoe. Put that on a, <laughs> shoe. a magazine. You will eat it. That sauce is so good. I know. Definitely go out and get that recipe. Check the recipe out at EspressoShow.com. It is a must for the summer. So, shakshukas are good. Hey, hey, if it isn't... Hold it, I was told to bring you this. Yes. Oh, yes, what, what is so it? We have chili. Uh, we have chili and we have soy sauce. Now, while you are oh. here, how were those wings? Listen, listen. That got chu chun. Yeah. Crispy chicken wings was superb. It is so flavorful. And I was just saying, now, I love Asian flavors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially on a chicken wing that's perfectly prepared. You guys did a great job. Thank you. Yes, you guys are amazing. I'd say thank you, but I was just observing. <laughs> oh, OK, well, OK. Well well, 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 I did call dibs on the chicken wings. Yes, so they're all for I you. Did. They're all for you. Enjoy. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Our shakshuka is looking amazing. And that was just the egg that we cracked in there and yes, cooked that perfect. in the actual lentil Mixture. Yeah, and then we Beautiful. finished it off with some Parmesan cheese, and you can enjoy it with any kind of bread or rolls. I'm using some bruschetta. Um, obviously, just rub some garlic over the bruschetta, mm. also add some extra umami flavor, and enjoy. Yeah, I, I, that's amazing. Garlic for breakfast. I'm sorry, I love garlic for breakfast. I know it's, it's not a breakfasty dish. I would put the garlic on that thing. I like eat garlic any time of the day. It's not a problem for me. I'm seeing some very familiar ingredients. The yeah, third yeah. dish, what are we making? So we're just taking it back home with a steak sandwich. Mm. Uh, but what makes it special is that I make a little bit of a chili oil and I mix it with mayo. So we've got like a chili mayo kind of vibe. These are perfect for game days or lunches or when you have friends over movie nights. It's the bomb. Nice, let's do a swap because I know you want to get cracking on that oil. Chili oils are amazing. The yeah. fact that it's oil, it means it lasts for quite a long time because it naturally yeah. preserves things. Get but it. also you want to just like, do you keep a chili oil in the fridge or do you keep it like on the counter? I keep it on the counter. Uh -huh. How do you keep your chili well, oil? Well, the thing is like during summer, true story, I keep all my like things like sesame oil, my chili oils, yeah. I keep all of them in the fridge. Just because of the heat in South Africa, Cape Town, summer heat. I, I don't want it to go rancid. So I always keep those things in the fridge. But during winter, that's fine. I can chill out on keep the counter. It on the shelf. Yeah, but yeah. chili oils are amazing. So how do you make yours? Uh, so this is just a basic one. I've got some chili flakes in here, some mm -hmm. garlic, some ginger, some star anise. Um, then we're going to add in the hot oil. And after we add in the hot oil, I like to add in some soy sauce, which is not a necessity, but it just gives it a lot of salty goodness. That umami again, which is yes. very, very important. We're using a fillet because we're fancy, but you can use like anything like a ribeye, sirloin, Literally, or Literally, any kind of steak. Even even a uh, skirt steak is quite good for it. I well. love skirt steak. Yes. I feel like we I don't. I feel like it's the underrated steak. Yeah, I'm gonna chat to my friends at Willie to see if I can get us those skirt steaks coming through because they are so delicious. It's got a lot more beefy flavor yes. than your normal regular yes. sirloin ribeye fillet. So, you've given it a beautiful sear. Correct. Um, whenever it comes to sandwiches that have fillet in them, for me, I prefer going rare and then chilling the steak down. I like seeing that vibrant pink that's inside. A lot of people are afraid mm. of that, however, but they should know that it's not blood. It's, 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 it's the muscle tissue, something. It's just blushing. It's, yeah, it's, exactly. It's just blush. Um, but I think that if you eat steak rare, there's, there's something mm. wrong with you. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. 
But also, not a bad thing if someone I mean, does want to... if you eat it, well done. Oopsie. Oh, well, yeah, but the thing also about a fillet, you must understand, there's no intramuscular fat. So if you do overcook it, you are going to end up with a very dry cut of, of meat. Yeah. If you are someone that does prefer having your steak cooked well done, go for something like a very fat ribeye, because even if you do cook it to the point of being well done, you'll still have enough of that fat in between the steak to give it like the, the juicy flavor. So keep that in mind. But we, what, what are we doing today? Is it rare, medium rare? Uh, we've got a medium rare steak. Medium rare steak, Perfect. okay, cool. So, so let's, let's pour over the boiling oil. Oh, nice, you do the oil into the bowl. Yeah. Get the kids out the kitchen for this part. Ooh, that sizzle. So we always talk about toasting your spices before you use them for like curry. Enhancing flavors, yeah. This is what you're doing basically, but you're toasting it with that hot oil and immediately it's gonna start permeating. It's, I can smell exactly. it from here. It's so delicious. Ooh, and that color, the color came through as well, I really know. quickly. And then what I like to do is, once we've stopped sizzling over here, I like to add in some mm -hmm. sauce and that for me just literally gives it a lot of saltiness yeah. and I love anything salty. And again, that extra salt can help preserve it as well. Exactly. So get that soy in there. Perfect. And that's done. So now very, we can add exciting. in our mayo. Okay, we've got our beautiful buns, the smallest buns we could find. Love, love, love. I am going to... Am I slicing steak? Is that what I'm doing? Oh, uh, yes, please. Okay, cool. So again, like you said, I think you did mention like, any type of bun we can go for. Yeah. So, the bun, do you, do you toast the bun? Are we going to toast it today? Uh, I think we can. These buns are crispy on the outside, so let's just... That's the one thing, right? You don't always have to toast your buns. Yeah. Sometimes if it's got a nice crust on the outside and it's super fluffy on the inside, like this bun is, sometimes it's nice just to, like... I know. I also prefer the, the softer interior, unless we're working with a soft bun all around. Mm. About that soft bun life, that soft life. Just do it, just do it. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm going to start off with your steak. Thin slices, thick slices? Uh, let's just go thin slice, thin cool. slice. So again, you do want to rest your steak for half the time that you cooked it, and yeah. that way it lo reserves those juices. And also make sure you're working with a sharp knife. That way you get more cleaner slices. Once I've sliced the steak, what happens next? How do we stop okay, boiling perfect. it? Okay, perfect. So your... I'll start digging in here. So let's open up here. Are and then we you doing just mix... both of them or are we doing one? Up to you. Let's just do one. Let's do one. So that's the chili oil you mixed with the mayonnaise. That's correct, yes. Oh, that's and a great that's way. basically what I call my chili mayo. It's actually oh, a yeah. secret of mine because I, I make burgers and all my friends they always like, what do I put in it? So now I've basically just given away my secret chili, chili mayo. Mayo. Yeah. Awesome. Go for it. Perfect. The, the quickest assembly you've ever done on a, of a steak bun, but still beautiful. You yes. have got. Okay, let's go. 20 seconds. Go. Jesus. Okay, so, and I, I'm always very generous when it comes to the mayonnaise. Yeah, it's not me. just about, it's not just about mayonnaise flavor. I want it, to see it dripping. There we go. It also gives it, like, juiciness to whatever you're adding to, like, a bun like this. Correct. Also, shout out to Iceberg Lettuce. I feel like Iceberg Lettuce gets, like, a cold shoulder from people. I know, because they're, it's... like, not the fancier kind, but they're actually the most crunchiest. Super crunchy, absolutely. Then, we, then we're going in with steak, and we're going with cheese, but... You can, you can chill. We're gonna come back in a second to see the final assembly of the steak bun. <laughs> it's my feel good breakfast show. We're back, we're back, and we're so excited <laughs> because they actually gave us a fourth segment for the culinary hotline, bling! Ting, ting, ting! So we're just going through what needs to happen now because it's gonna be fire, right? Yes. Okay, so while you're busy torching the cheese, we have another voice note. Let's hear that voice note. Hi, um, I just want to send a shout out to Shannon um, and I want to say I'm super proud of her and she makes the best food. Um, whenever I visit her place, she's always cooking up a storm and I just want to say thank you because friends who feed you are the best kind. Bye. <laughs> Can oh you please God. tell us who that was, Shannon? So that's actually my best friend, Nina. We've been best friends since we were in primary school. So Aww. it's like a lifelong friendship. I think that was like the most adorable thing I've ever heard in my life. Can everybody go, wow, Nina? <laughs> <laughs> Only one person did it. You're all lame. But thank you, Nina. Thank you so much for that voice. We absolutely love it. You torch the cheese. The steak is looking good. All you have to do now is take a bite, right? Yeah. Oh, Here we go. yes. Okay. Here we go. Uh, I, I have to take a small TV bite, but look at that cross section. And, and exactly how I like the steak, amazing. nice and rare. Okay, small TV, top billing bite. The steak is so tender. I know, it's mm. delicious, right? The mayonnaise. 
Tell the people again quickly what's in the mayonnaise. Okay, so the mayonnaise we've got, just got some, um, it's also an Asian inspired, so mm -hmm. the chili crunch is chili flakes, sesame seeds, star anise, cinnamon, um, and to end it off, we do some sizzling oil and some soy sauce. Go get the recipe, expressoshow.com. Thank you so much. We're back next week with more Conrad Dog Bling! Ching, ching, ching!